All right, so here's a simple formula here that says final position equals initial position plus change in position. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit and replace this right here, displacement, change in position with velocity times time. Now I switched the order and I did that for a reason that I'll show in a minute. Um, but velocity times time is displacement, but that's not true if you're talking about a varying velocity when there's an acceleration, which is going to be talked about later. So this is for constant velocity or average velocity. Now I'm going to compare this equation here. This is a physics equation. Final position equals velocity times time plus initial position to something from math. And it's this right here. Y equals mx plus b. This is called slope-intercept form because what it has is the slope of the graph, m, in the y-intercept. And it turns out this equation right here is actually in slope-intercept form. So I take a graph and I plot position on the vertical axis and time on the x-axis. It is going to be of this form right here, slope-intercept form. Now, don't get confused by the axes here. We are graphing x on sort of the y-axis. That's why I'm using the words horizontal axis and vertical axis, because in physics, usually the x-axis or the horizontal axis is going to be time. It can be position, but it's usually going to be time. And then the y-axis is just what you're graphing as a function of time. So in that case, this is position. And in unit one, position is given by the letter x. Okay. Now, the horizontal axis is for our independent variable. So we're looking at here the final position as something moves through time. So time is our independent variable. And then as a result of time passing, the position changes. So that's the dependent variable. It goes on the vertical axis or the y-axis. Now let's go back here to slope-intercept form. This m right here is for slope. So if I use the analogy here, the velocity, that's going to be the slope of the graph. So if I plot position on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, the slope, and what slope is, is rise over run. It's change in position over change in time. That's going to be the velocity. The other thing here, the y-intercept, that's going to be the initial position because here, when time is zero, my graph's going to start somewhere because that's time zero. That's sort of when something, we start graphing its motion or it starts moving. So that's going to be where it starts. So here's an example of two points here. So this is an object at time zero in position two. It's moving with positive slope, so positive velocity, to x equals 10, or position equals 10, at a time of 4 seconds. So right here, this y-intercept means, initially, so at time 0, its initial position is going to be at x equals 2. And then for the slope. So the slope is rise over run, and I do want to use rise over run here, because the formula in math is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Of course here, our x variable is time, and our y variable is position, which is x. That's why I do not get confused. We'll just call it rise over run. So for this one, it's going to be 10 minus 2. So that's 8. 8's our rise. It goes up 8. And then over run, 4 minus 0. So it runs in the positive direction horizontally, but 4. So we have 8 over 4 is our slope, which is positive 2 which means our velocity for this case is positive 2. OK, so this is just a couple of problems looking at position graphs in action. So. Got this guy. Now, this guy is at x equals 4, and he's there at time t equals 0. So that makes this his initial position. And then he's going to walk with a velocity 
it's a negative velocity. So on the number line here, this is the positive direction. So if his velocity is negative, that means he's going this way. He's gonna do this for eight seconds. And the question is just to graph this motion. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do in my graph, this is very important to do in physics, is label the axes. And each axis gets two things that it's labeled with. What it actually is, what quantities on that axis, and then the units for it. So on the horizontal axis, I'm calling it the horizontal axis because I'm not graphing x here, I'm graphing time, because time's my independent variable. So I'll write time. And then the units of time, because it could be seconds, hours, minutes, are gonna be seconds. Then I'll go over to the vertical axis, but I, I don't wanna call it the y-axis because we're graphing x here. So my vertical axis is position, and the units of position in this question are meters. Okay, and then time's gonna go from zero on the vertical axis to time eight. So I'll graph that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then position. Position's gonna start at positive four. So I'll go up here, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then for where it ends, I can use kinematics here. So final position, I'm gonna write it in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So y, my vertical axis variable, equals mx plus b, so m is slope. In that case, that's gonna be velocity, so you have constant velocity. My x variable is time, so y equals mx. So final position equals vt plus my y-intercept, which in this case is gonna be initial position. So plugging in numbers looks like this. Final position equals velocity, negative one meters per second, times time, eight seconds, plus initial position, which is positive four. So that is negative eight plus four, so the final position is gonna be negative four meters. Okay, so I have a start point and an end point here. It starts at time t equals zero. The initial position is positive four. So my first point here is time zero comma four. Okay, it's not y comma x here, it's t comma x. And then it ends up at time eight position negative four. So I'll add that to the axes here. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So my final point here is eight, negative four. And I have to connect these two dots for these two positions and times. And how am I gonna do that? Well, the velocity, I guess I should have written constant velocity in the question, but it is a constant velocity. And what that means is constant slope. Now in math, there is a word for a graph with a constant slope, and that's gonna be a line. So a line has a slope that's not changing. So I'm gonna connect these two points with a line segment. Looks like that. And just looking at it, because it's a grid, I can tell the slope is, well, I didn't draw it perfectly, but the slope is negative one, but I can check that here. So. For position versus time graph, because that's what slope is. Slope is the rate of change of position over time. So I'll find the slope here, which is literally the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable. And that is the formula for velocity as well. Now going with the graph, um, my vertical variable ends at negative four starts at four. My horizontal variable, which is time, ends at eight, starts at zero. So my slope is negative eight over eight. As expected, the slope is negative one and it's a line, so it's always negative one. And the problem says the velocity is negative one. So the slope equals the velocity, that checks out. So that's the position versus time graph with constant velocity. The slope is velocity 
the y-intercept is the initial position. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna do one more question here. And this is gonna give us a graph and then ask some questions. So the first question is find the total displacement. Now, this graph does change shapes. It's always linear though, so the velocity is always constant for these three segments. But there are three segments. But for displacement, that doesn't matter. Okay. Distance does depend on path. Displacement doesn't. All displacement is looking at what's the initial position. And here, that's zero. And then what's the final position? And for here, that is 20. So displacement, remember displacement is just delta x, change in position. Well, it went from zero to 20. So the change in position is 20 minus zero, and it's 20 meters. Now there is a way to find distance on this graph. Okay, we have three segments of motion. The first segment is this. It goes from position zero to position 40. So here the displacement is plus 40, and the distance is 40. From two to five, this segment here, the position is x equals 40. It stays at x equals 40. If something's not changing position, that means it's at rest. It's not moving. The slope is zero, right? In math, a horizontal line means slope is zero, so the velocity is zero. So it's not moving. Now for this third segment. It starts at 40, ends at 20. So this means for this segment here, the displacement is negative 20. But the distance is positive 20, or just 20. So there is no sign for distance. So for this motion, it has a displacement of 20, but the distance, oops, not that. The distance is 40, then it's 20. So its distance is 60, but the displacement's only 20, okay? Because distance depends on path, displacement just depends on initial and final positions. Okay. The next three questions are to find the velocity at different points on the graph. And as stated earlier, the velocity is just gonna be the slope of the graph. So we'll start here at time one, just somewhere around there. Um, but what I know it's on, it's on a line segment. It's on this line segment right here. And I know for a line segment, because it's a line, the slope is constant. So I'll just find the endpoints and find the slope. So this endpoint is zero, zero. This endpoint is 240. So the slope here, which is the velocity, is rise 40 minus zero over run two minus zero. And that's gonna give us a slope of plus 20. Right, it's a positive slope because it's sloping upwards. So the velocity is positive and it's 20 here. The next part's easy, horizontal line. It's got no slope, so it's got no velocity. It's not moving. So right here, it's not moving. Slope equals zero, velocity equals zero. The last segment here, it is going downwards. It's a downward slope. So that means it has a negative slope. So there's a negative velocity. And again, eight is somewhere right here, but it's along a, along a line segment. So let's take the two endpoints. Endpoint here is five comma 40. This endpoint here is 10 comma 20. And then to find velocity, again, for a position versus time graph, the slope of the graph gives you velocity. So the slope, is rise, or I guess fall in this case. So it's 20 minus 40 over 10 minus five. So that's negative 20 over five. And that does give us a negative number. It is negative four meters per second, which is also the slope. All right, so that was a look at position versus time graphs with constant velocity.